Just to be able to share it again with you this morning, um, to share the word of God. You know, uh, serving the Lord is um, is something that really happens every day. It uh, it doesn't only happen on a Sunday. Some of us probably that's all that happens is on a Sunday. But uh, you know, when you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and the Spirit of God, it's an everyday event. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm awoken in the, uh, in the early hours of the morning and, you know, I just can't help but just to spend some time with the Lord. And uh, it's such a beautiful thing because, you know, it sets the whole day, my whole working day, uh, on a good footing. And so, anyway, this morning I wanted to share a, a, a message that God has given me to share with you this morning. And um, I, I hope, I really pray this morning that uh, the, the Holy Spirit will open your, your ears and your understanding to receive. And I hope it blesses you this morning with the message that I'm going to, to share. Um, with my message, the title of my message this morning is Threading the Eye of a Needle. Now, I have a packet of needles here. And not only do I have a packet of needles, but I have a little bit of thread. Okay? And my question to everyone and to you that are listening this morning is how many of us, probably the, uh, the, the, the ladies out there will understand what I'm saying, us men, we don't use needles very often, do we? But it's just a type of what I'm trying to share this morning. How many of us have tried to thread the eye of the needle? And how many of us have found it very difficult to thread that, that little narrow opening? Um, well, you know, you look at it and it's such a simple task. But yet it takes a lot of focus sometimes. It takes a lot of determination. And it takes a lot of patience to thread that little needle. And they come in all various sizes and shapes and, you know, but I want you to keep that in mind as I, as I begin to share what the Lord has placed on my heart this morning. You know, when you look at this year, 2020, we have faced so many difficult times. You know, we have faced droughts, uh, we have faced uh, floods, we have had the bushfires, the pandemic, and you know, um, you can almost say that we're looking down the barrel of some perhaps econ economical uh, fallouts from what we've faced. And um, you know what, I, I, I'm going to take a, just a little stab in the dark here. And I'm going to say that there's probably a lot of people, a lot of you out there, that are face these difficult times and are somewhat um, anxious, uh, perhaps a little bit um, overwhelmed and fed up with what we have seen and what we've had to experience and go through in these times. But a scripture that comes to mind is Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. If you have your Bibles, just turn with me. Matthew 7, starting from 13. And the word of God says, and Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. You know, sometimes the same determination 
the same patience, the same focus it takes for you to thread the eye of that little needle, then the same focus and patience and determination is required as you live this life and you navigate the difficulties that we find, the hardships that come our way. As Christians, we are needed to keep our eye wholly focused on the destination. And so, it is, it is very important as, uh, as we navigate life that we, we know and we understand and we read our Bible. Why do I say that? Well, you know, it's like our roadmap. To read our Bible is something so important and precious because Jesus, through the Word of God, through the Old Testament, straight through to the New Testament, has made known past events, present events, and even future events. And so, no matter what the situation, we are, we are to keep our compass, we are to keep our compass focused on Christ. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11, that for those of us that are in Christ, we shall not be caught unaware of the enemy's scheme. We shall not be caught unaware of what's happening and, 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 and to the point where we become so fearful and so, um, you know, um, disillusioned as to what's happening in our society, in our nation. Because the Word of God, it gives us a guideline. It gives us, it gives us direction. It gives us truth. It sheds the light in the path that we can take. And so my encouragement is to continue to focus, continue to read the Word of God. You know, in John chapter 10, verses 27 through to 28, it says, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And he goes on to say, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them from the palm of my hand. You see, sometimes as we go and we walk and we, we, we go about our daily work, it's very difficult to hear the voice of God in certain situations. But friends, it's not impossible to hear God's voice. How do we hear God's voice? Well, my encouragement to you is that it is important to read God's Word. Because, you know, the Spirit of God will never speak something that is contrary to the Word of God. And so it's always in the Word of God. That's why it's important that we focus and we keep our compass wholly directed on, you know, continuing to walk in faith continuing to serve God, even in the difficult times. Amen. Even though we never understand what is happening around us. Friends, keep focused. Keep focused on threading that eye of the needle. You know, we may not get it the first time, we may not get it the second time, but with, with perseverance and determination, we will get it. Yeah. We will make it. We can run our race. We can finish our race. You know, the Bible says in Romans 5, verses 3 through to 4, it talks about this perseverance. How if you continue to persevere in the things of God, if you continue to just focus on the things of God, not allowing the turmoil is not allowing the storms of life to change our focus or redirecting our resolve. Then that perseverance will build a character in your life. 
You know, whenever there's a shaking that comes in a nation, there's two things that are always present. There is the natural and there is the supernatural. In other words, the spiritual. And, you know, we look about what we've had to endure since the beginning of 2020 in our lives. We see that there are a lot of natural events that are taking place and there are also a lot of supernatural events. A lot of spiritual uh, meanings behind a lot of these events. And that's why you get a lot of, uh, today, we get a lot of opinions, we get a lot of beliefs, we get a lot of unbeliefs. And so, you know, you can see that on social media, uh, how people have their different opinions about different things as to why things have happened and everything else. But, friends, if you read the Word of God and you have an understanding from the beginning to the end, we that have a spiritual insight, you know, it, it, it is easier for us to understand. And I guess that's why you get a lot of arguments, because you get the, 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 the religious point of view and then you get the non-religious point of view. But... Nevertheless, um, you know, there's a, a portion in the, in the Word of God that speaks about the eye of the needle. And that is found in Matthew 19, verses 24. And Jesus said, He said, Is it easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? And, you know, as I come to a little bit of a close, I just want to just focus on that one scripture if I can. In Matthew 19, 24. Was Jesus referring to that a rich man could never enter the kingdom of God? No, not at all. But there are some things that are so profound in that scripture. And you have to look back at history. You see, in Jerusalem, there was a gate. And it was a small gate that was to the side on the wall of Jerusalem that when the main gate was shut of a night time, this small gate, which was called the Eye of the Needle, would be left open for travellers that could come with their camels and enter into the city. But for that camel to enter into the, into the city through that Eye of the Needle, it had to do something first. And the rider of that camel had to stop and it had to unload the camel of all its baggage, of all its possessions, of everything that was laden upon that camel for the camel to enter the eye of the needle. And so, I want to encourage you this morning, as we come to a close, focus on your destiny, and that is to live a life holy for the Lord Jesus Christ. We can live our life, we can have so many things. But when it all comes down to it, sometimes, friends, we're needing to let go of our worldly possessions. We need to let go of the things that we hold so dearly to us. The Word of God says that we should store up in heaven our riches, not on the earth, where it can rust and moth can just deteriorate. And so, just as the same focus, the same determination, the same perseverance it takes to thread the eye of the needle, is the same determination, perseverance, and patience it takes as we walk this walk of life on our way to our Heavenly Father. And so this morning, as we come to a close,
just a simple message. Threading the eye of the needle. I pray this morning that we look at our lives and we can anything that is we're just holding on to, dragging along, you know, things that aren't important in our life. Arguments that we have that are just irrelevant. Let us just thank the Lord that He makes it possible. He makes it possible because He calls you by name. He knows every hair in your head. He knows your every sorrow, your every joy. He knows your every life. I thank you, Lord, this morning. As we come to the close, in Jesus' name, may you be blessed. We pray for you. We love you in Jesus' name.